Hey, this is Matt once again. What about to know the videos? Another paid request this time from Itasa. Sorry, I mispronounced that name. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. E E T A S A. Itasa. Itasa. Anyway, he wanted me to react to his top 30 favorite films. Okay. And for those interested in requesting any type of videos or topics, reactions, commentaries, re-reviews, comparisons, tier lists, whatever the case may be, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal, that's usually the best bet, or join my Patreon, both links are down below in the info box, under most of these videos. But, let's go into his list, of course this list is going to be his opinion, doesn't mean they're going to share mine or yours or anybody else, so let's see what it is. So number 30, we got Cliffhanger. God, you have big props to having Cliffhanger on the list. Love that film. To me, it's one of the best action films of the 90s. The beautiful scenery, Stallone in his peak form. Great bad guy, John Lithgow. Wonderful stunt sequences. Keep your arms and legs in the vehicle at all times. Wonderful opening to really build up the drama where he's trying to save this girl and she dies really good film really good film love cliffhanger number 29 we got casino okay I like casino yeah it's pretty lengthy but I thought the story was interestingly told by Martin Scorsese yeah good cast of people like Robert De Niro and Joe Pesci even I think uh, I think Joe Bob Briggs even had an appearance in it. And it's funny, I don't remember a lot of details on it because my brain is faulty nowadays with that type of stuff, but I mean it wouldn't be in my top thirty favorite films, but I do think to see it was a really good film. Number twenty eight, Planet of the Apes, the original. Yeah, I mean I don't hate the film. I don't love it like other people do, but I know it's a sci-fi movie that a lot of people adore and grew up with. You know, the concept is interesting with the everything, the the way how the apes acted like humans and how our own faults could be reflected into the faults of these apes and vice versa. How the even though they're evolved, they're making the same mistakes man is making. In terms of how we treat one another, how we treat things that we think are below us species wise, everything in between. So, yeah, overall, yeah, uh, I do not mind Planet of the Apes, but I've never been a big on the franchise. But I know a lot of people are, so very commendable to have that on there. Number 27, The Naked Gun. It's a nice choice. I do like the Naked Gun. Rest in peace, Leslie Nielsen. Definitely missed the guy. People forget, back to the day, he was a serious actor. And then once he got into comedy, doing films like Airplane, it's like, you know, once I stopped taking myself seriously, things really... Things really changed. Maybe not, maybe not just personal-wise, but definitely career-wise. Because he would definitely became more of a star once he became known more for comedy. I mean, he only even got his own franchise, like the Naked Gun films. I didn't be in an airplane. Then in like a little sub genre of his own, wrongfully accused, Spy Heart, like all these other movies. So, like I said, that was really cool to see. That was really cool to witness that success. Granted, the later films didn't really do that well, like wrongfully accused and was a. Mr. Magoo, but I remember some of the Naked Gun films being fun, especially the, the first one. Number 26, Euro Trip. Uh, not for me. Not my cup of tea. Not big on the road trip and Euro Trip type of movies. I didn't mind American Pie for what it was, but I didn't just. Eh. Teach their own. Just not for me. Number 25, Fast and Fierce Tokyo Drift. Dan, I disagree. Uh, that's actually one of my least favorite uh, Fast and Furious movies. I have, for me, I think Fast Five is much better. Six is much better. 
the septum one is much better. Uh, the tacit taters they really interest me. Drifting maybe looks cool at first, but I kind of got old after a while. I mean, I'll take it over part four, and I'll take over part nine and ten, but uh, I'm just never into Tokyo Drift. The 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 lead died didn't do. I don't, I don't know. This wasn't for me, I guess. Number 24, Terminator 2. It's a good choice. Solid sequel. Arnold, Linda Hamilton, Edward Furlong, Joe Morton, Robert Patrick. Great special effects. Wonderfully done action sequences. Stella Store by Brad Fidel. Nothing wrong with having Terminator 2 on the list. Number 23, American Pie. Did I don't mind the film, but it's not a favorite of mine. I don't mind, I don't hate the film. I don't. I thought it was, it was okay. There's just a lot of other comedies I enjoy more. Number 22, The Original Batman and 21 Batman Returns. Great choices. Big fan of those. Michael. It's what introduced me to Michael Keaton. What introduced me to Batman <clears throat> as a character. I know those are not looked as the most accurate representation. But the, the Rousey story by Danny Elfman, John Nicholson, doing a wonderful job as the Joker. The great set design and look that Tim Burton and his crew brought to those films. <coughs> and sorry about that. Just very... Made them feel and look unique. And... <coughs> I go back and forth which I like better, Babbitt or Babbitt Returns. Just by Returns, I like that it was more of a Tim Burton film. I like the snowy landscape. Michelle Pfeiffer is very sexy as Catwoman. Yeah, I like Dan DeVito as the Penguin. But Batman, uh, it's, it's hard for me to, to pick. But uh, two very good superhero movies. Number 20, the original Star Wars. And number 19, Empire Strikes Back. Uh, my favorite is the original, but you know I don't mind Empire Strikes Back. I don't love it like other people do. I like the film. I do like it. But I actually like Star Wars and Return of the Jedi more. I think just because it's kind of in that weird middle section where Luke doesn't really do a whole lot. He's training. Gets his ass kicked by Darth Vader. Just we have to set up for the next one. And... Then the cliffhanger ending, which is to set up the next one. So, you know, you're watching a movie. You want to get a beginning, middle, and end. And is just kind of this cliffhanger, uh, cliffhanger ending because of what happens afterward. So, you can't really have any sense of closure because it's to set things up for the next one. I mean, I do like the battle between Luke and Vader. Uh, I do like the addition of Yoda. I do like some of the banter between Han Solo and Leia. Uh, some of the nice scenery like Hoth at the beginning of the film. And the action sequences. So it's not fair to say Luke doesn't do anything. At the beginning, he takes down some of those uh, enemy forces at the beginning of the film. By being his expert pilot self. There's some nice creativity that was it the Tauntauns and, and all that stuff. So I still think it's a good movie. It just again I like the other ones more. But you know, nothing wrong with having those on the list. Number eighteen, the first blade. That's cool to see. I love Blade. I also love Blade Two. Blade Two is actually my favorite of the bunch, but I do love the original Blade. Um yeah, some of the CGI at the end with the villain. Like when he splits in half and comes back, it's not the best look to see Jai nowadays. But it was cool to see a kick-ass R-rated action vampire movie. Was this type was a badass? The whole beginning portion action sequence is stellar. You don't you just you say they kind of blew their load early on because it was the best scene in the movie. But the rest of us, you know, I do like how badass Blade is. I like Chris Christopherson as his father figure. Steven Dorff, I didn't mind as the villain. I like the little mythology they bring with the vampires, like they're raving, doing their rave at the beginning, all the blood is coming down. 
this very memorable sequence. And Wesley Snipes was a true badass self in that. Even once in a while, some little bit of humor. You motherfucker, you lost your mind? What are you shooting at me for? Or when he cuts Steven Dorf in half and he turns back to the other and he turns and he's like, what the fuck? <laughs> but enough sprinkle in there, but not to turn to a fucking joke like a Marvel film of today. This is when Marvel films had a little bit more interest, at least to me. Films like Blade. It's going to be a lot better than whatever this new Blade is. Number 17, Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End. Honestly, I don't even remember that film. Is that the one with Chow Yun Fat in it? Yeah, I don't even remember that film. Really, the only one I liked is the first one. The other ones I either found forgettable or I don't think I saw the last one. I don't. I don't remember if I saw it at World's End. If I did, I didn't remember anything about it. So, yeah, teach their own. Number sixteen, Bloodsport. Great to have Bloodsport on there. Love it. One of my favorite Van Damme movies. Great martial arts, martial arts tournament movie. Bolo Yun is your villain. Great store. Uh, well done fight sequences. Show that Van Damme had the star presence to become a star. You know how to use his body with the camera to do those beautiful helicopter kicks. Great assortment of villains from the go up against. Whether it be the big guy that he does the you know the nut punch and I did Bolo Yun as your main villain. I like the sidekick Ray Jackson, played by Donald Dibb. He was fun, not annoying at all. So love Bloodsport. Number fifteen, Out for Justice. My favorite Steve Stoll film. Nice to see that on the list. Richie, you wanna know why Richie did Bobby Lupo? I know people don't like his accent. I actually like Steve Stoll's Brooklyn accent in it. I actually find that sincerely fun to watch. And I actually do think it's one of Sadol's better performances. I really do. I like William Forsyth as the villain. You get to see... This was... Had enough of a budget to have a sleek enough look that I didn't feel direct to video. Had some badass action moments. Blowing off a bad guy's leg. Uh, having a guy's hand connect to the wall with a meat cleaver. Still breaking bones. Taking a... Like a handkerchief or something. With a pool ball. The cue ball, I should say in the pool hall. The cue ball hitting people in the face, knocking their teeth out. Yeah, enough of that brutality. Sadal in his prime. No ticking people through windows and it's edited as if the guy goes through the window 85 times. No other people voicing him because he didn't want to do the ADR, all that stuff. <laughs> Out for Justice is great. Number 14, the original Toro Recall. I agree, that's a classic. Love that film. Great hyper-violence by Paul Verhoeven. So great uh, set design. The Johnny Cab, the way that looks and s is set up. Dr. Ironside and Ronnie Katz as your villains. I like Rachel Tickleton. The sort of playing with your mind. Is it real? Is he in a dream? Is he not? A wonderful score by Jared Goldsmith. Love Total Recall. It's definitely one of Arnold's classic movies. 13, the original Halloween, What More Can Be Said. Uh, great music by John Carpenter. Great usage of the widescreen format. Those panning shots to really create the mood. J.B. Lee Curtis and Donald Pleasance. They do well in the, the movie, and it's simple, but it's effective in its job, what it needs to do. Number 12, Predator. The original Predator is a classic. Uh, great cast. Of, a, of an ensemble from Arnold to Carl Weathers to Bill Duke to Sonny Landon to Jesse Ventura. Bunch of badasses and a great usage of a, one of the better looking jungles I've seen in a movie. Alice Silvestri's Pulse Pouting Score. Wonderful design on The Predator by Stan Winston. It's a slow button but it works well and when the action hits it hits hard. Uh, doesn't shy away from the violence. And it was great to see Arnold in a horror movie and a creature feature movie. Definitely one of the better creature features of its of all time, honestly. Number 11, Raiders of the Lost Ark. My favorite Indiana Jones film. Absolute classic. Love Raiders of the Lost Ark. 
wonderful adventure story. Number 10, Wolf of Wall Street. Good choice. I mean, I do like that film. It's actually one of my favorite Martin Scorsese films. And even though it's a long running time, I didn't feel it. I, I thought the way the energy it created, the cast, Leonardo DiCaprio, Jonah Hill, even have like Matthew McConaughey in there. I think Margot Robbie. Like I say, it created this energetic feel to it that just... I just it's been a while since I've seen it, so I can't remember the details. Like, there's so many movies trying to fit in my head; it's hard to remember all these details. But I mean, this—I remember not knowing what to think of it. The Wolf of Wall Street. I figured, okay, it's gonna be a lot of business meetings, and it was more about just how crazy and having a ball this guy wanted to have, and weird situation he gets himself in, and. I remember it being a lot more fun and energetic than I thought it would be. With Wall Street in the title. Number nine, Goodfellas. Definitely one of Martin Scorsese's best ones. Breast in peace to Ray Liotta. I did definitely had that great way of like moving the camera to make it look like one take at the beginning of the film. Ray Liotta's narration. I still remember the bit where you know his he didn't die, but he's now subjected to being in suburbia, which almost seems like a, a worse hell for him. But, of course, Joe Pesci, I believe he won the Oscar for that film. One more tribute said about Goodfellas. Same with Pulp Fiction, number eight. Definitely one of Tarantino's best films. I did a good cast with John Travolta, Bruce Willis, Samuel Jackson, among others. Uma Thurman, the way it's edited where this actually takes place at the end and this is a very different way of editing the film but at the same time the way it was done still wasn't confusing or maybe it was a bit confusing at first but kind of got the gist of it as it went along uh, but yeah good movie number seven Rocky IV love Rocky IV it's my favorite Rocky film I know people say it's montage the movie, but you know what's some of the best montages of all time? I'll take it. It's MTV Rocky. Well, you know what? It's fucking entertaining. has one of the best soundtracks of all time. Uh, won the great fight at the end. Great villain, Dolph Lundgren's Ivan Drago. I'm happy to like it. Number six, Commando. One of my favorite Arnold films. He's a badass in it. I ate Green Berets, I ate green berets for breakfast. And now I'm really hungry. <laughs> right? Ron shoots the guy in the head. Just so sad. I mean, there's some technical errors. Like when he pushes the car over. On one shot, the car is all fucked up on the side. But then they drive away. The car is perfectly fine on that side. Once in a while, the ending, when he's throwing the grenades, you see the flops that make the people fly up. You know, sometimes there's little mistakes here and there. But other than that... It's a fun one-man army movie. Simple. He wants his daughter back. He kills everybody in front of him. Sometimes makes some funny lines. Don't disturb my friend. He's dead tired. <laughs> Vernon Wells is fun as the villain. Let will shoot between the eyes. We'll shoot between the balls. <laughs> it's, it's a highly entertaining movie. Uh, number five, Pirates of the Caribbean. The first one. That's cool. I mean, it would be my top... Hundred, but I still like the movie. I still remember having a fun, adventurous time with it. Johnny Depp did a good job. Number four, The Godfather. I teach their own. I've never been a fan of The Godfather. Could never get into it. I much prefer Goodfellas. I much prefer Casino, which are on the list. Goodfellas, I thought was just much more interesting like with the way it's written the way it's directed it didn't feel the godfather just feels like a slaw to sit through and if people love it that's cool i just never been a fan of the godfather films any of them not for me number three for russia with love that's actually one of the james bond films i do not like i like dr no 
My favorite Sean Connery film would be Goldfinger. I liked. Uh, you only live twice. Not big on Thunderball. Not big on Never Say Never Again. And there's a lot of other Bond films I like more. Golden Eye, Tomorrow Never Dies, The Spy Who Loved Me, Skyfall, Live and Let Die, The Living Daylights, Blices the Kill. So there's a lot more Bond films I liked over For Russia With Love. The, for Russia With Love, I just found very boring. I remember a fight on a train. I think Robert Shaw and him fight on a train, I believe. But the rest of it I just remember being very tedious to sit through. And it just wasn't for me. Number two, Starface. Great to see that on there. I love Starface. I did a commentary on it. Very, you know, It's a pretty long movie, but Al Pacino... Uh, is fantastic and that's one of my favorite performances of all time really one of my favorite performances great ending say hello to my little film Tony Montana take you all to fucking hell or you dare kill kids huh fuck that shit you die now motherfuckers I love that you die now motherfucker yeah yeah get him Tony the Tony Santana and the cousin Ton Montana, I say, the choice of having my cousin Tony on the list is A number one. Bushi to live it. Actually, that's Arnold, what I'm talking about. But yeah, I really love Starface. Love that film. Great job. Uh, by everybody. I love the pacing of the film. Uh, the... Just the, the 80s feel, the soundtrack, and just a lot of great scenes like Tony telling, You put your fucking fingers at me, say hello to the bad guy. Or say goodbye, say goodbye to the bad guy. First you get the money, then you get the power. Then when you get the power, then you get the pussy. This town just one big pussy way and get fucked. I just, that's a film I could quote and just enjoy myself quoting the film. So yeah, Starface is great. And number one, Rocky. I mean, it, Rocky's a great choice to have as a favorite film, man. Can't complain about that. It's a the million to one shot. The ultimate underdog story. His hope is just to go the distance. As well as this nice love story between him and Adrian. Great showcase of the, the town of Philadelphia. Carl Weathers, Burr Young. It's a film that was uplifting the people shows that if Rocky can make it to have that chance maybe we can all get that chance the great music and be introduced to Bill Conti's music and the Rocky theme just a movie you watch and uh, as the sequels went on you were ready to cheer crowd pleaser and he might not have won at the end technically he did win because he went the distance, people didn't think he would, and he found love. And that's what mattered more. With that great shot at the end, that's part of movie magic. Where's your hat? I love you. I love you. Hugging, right at the pinnacle, freeze frame, this is what matters. He went the distance, he proved he could do it. He wasn't just a bum, he, just, he didn't get just knocked down the first or second round. No one thought he would go the distance. Wow, this is a crazy Cinderella story. And he has his love. Pretty happy at that moment. And the way the music peaks and the freeze frame, I think just the audience, just that exuberance of energy. And it'll leave the theater just happy and just, yeah, Rocky. Da -da -na 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 -na. Thus created a phenomenon, cultural phenomenon, Oscar winning movie, and Stallone's career. So, good choice. I was actually looking through, let me look at some of the reviews. You do reviews on Letterboxd. So, I figured do a little bit of addition. Hard Night Falling, Dolph Lundgren, half a star piece of shit. He's right. He's right about that. That is a piece of shit. Godzilla 1954, four stars, first time watch of this classic, 
Yeah, I like that film as well. He didn't ask me to do this, but I fear why not. But yeah, I like Godzilla 1954. Saboteur 1942, Classic Hitchcock. I enjoy that film. John Wick 4, four stars. Uh, that's cool, T. Cerrone. I know I'm alone in that. Red Heat. Cool. Enjoy the film. I enjoy Red Heat as well. Last Hatchy Hero, three and a half stars. Very cool. I enjoy that film as well. Castle Falls, three out of five. I didn't hate the film, but I know you and... Uh, it looks like you and I know my friend Effrey, they enjoyed that film more. Blade 2, four stars. Very cool. Surviving the Game, four stars. Very cool. Crank, three and a half stars. Tango and Cash, three and a half stars. I'd probably give it higher, but that's cool that you still like the film. That's cool. Uh, let's see. Mark for Death, three and a half stars. Die with a Vengeance, four stars. Indian Angels Electric Save, four and a half. The Raid, four. Tis the Dragon, three and a half. Blood and Bone, four and a half. Very cool. I'd probably say I like The Last Stand more than you. You gave it two and a half stars. I probably I would give it higher. Uh, we disagree on Volcano. You gave it one and a half stars. I disagree. I really love Volcano. I think that's a fun popcorn movie. Teach their own. Uh, Predator 2, I like more than three and a half stars. I, I would give, For me, that's a five star movie. But again, that's cool. I at least see some. You like some of it, at least. <laughs> Cool, John with two, four and a half stars. I think that's the same rating I gave it. Very cool. Uh, Silent Night, Deadly Night 2, four stars. I mean, I, I did enjoy that film as well for, for what it is. Nightmare on Street, Part 5, The Dream Child, one and a half stars. I like the first four movies, but holy shit, we go downhill quickly with this one. Fully agree with you. Fully agree. Con Air four and a half out of five. Fully agree. So, very cool, man. I'm I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name. E E T A S A E E T A S A E E T A S A. But thank you for the request, man. I said of the I mean, Rotti, Starface, Commando, Rotti Four, Raise Lost Art, Predator, Bloodsport, Total Recall, Alpha Justice. You know, cliffhanger. I mean, pretty good list. So, uh, pretty good list. So, there you go. Thanks for watching. Take care, and we'll see you guys later. Bye bye.